Here we're going to use three steps to sketch again to graph a basic cosine graph. Y equals two cosine, pi over two X. So the pi over two might look a little bit strange to you. Don't worry, we'll break that down in the first step and make sure that we really see how to work with that. It is way easier than you probably think. All right, we have our method outlined on the left and we've got a grid on the right. Remember our steps are one, find the essential information and analyze. Two, plot the key points in the cosine pattern. And three, sketch and repeat. So our equation is in the form y equals a cosine bx. Okay, we see it's an unshifted cosine graph. And remembering this also helps us easily identify a and b. So we see a is two. Okay, that'll be the amplitude. So from midline to max or min, two units. Okay, and then b is pi over two. Now, while that looks a little bit funny, if you just calculate 3.14 divided by two, or maybe you just know that off the top of your head, okay, you know that's about one and a half. And so B, remember, tells us how many cycles happen between zero and two pi. So we should have about one and a half. All right, B also helps us find the period. And here's where things are gonna really shape up nicely for us. The period for cosine, we will find by calculating two pi divided by b. So it's 2 pi divided by pi over 2. Okay, if it helps you to write that out, that's 2 pi times 2 over pi. Okay, so that you see is 4 pi over pi, or just 4. So our period is actually not in terms of pi, it's just 4 units. Okay, so the length of our horizontal cycle is going to be 4. All right, so that really does make it pretty easy, I think. Um, let's go ahead and pick some scale labels. Remember, we do the horizontal scale labels very intentionally to help us with the pattern in the, ne in the next step. Okay, we take our period and divide by four to choose a value for the horizontal scale labels. So in this case, four divided by four, that's just one. Okay, the vertical scale, you can count by one or you can look to A if you'd rather just count by two, that's fine. I think I'm gonna count by one here as well. Okay, so we can label our axes before moving on, and it is as easy as just counting. All right, so take just a few seconds to do that. It's really setting us up for success here. Okay, like I said, you could count by two if you wanted here. I'm just gonna count by one so we can see the difference if you compared other graphs you've done. Um, it's nice to be able to see the amplitude as different from if it were just regular one cosine. All right, so we have finished our essential information and our analysis. Let's move on to step two and we'll plot our key points. Okay, so let's remember our cosine pattern is maximum zero, minimum zero. Okay, if you have a reflection, you know it would kind of flip that. Um, but we don't have a reflection here. There's no negative out front. So we know that this is just a, an original cosine pattern. Okay, and we know that our maximum y coordinate, we just look at a, we see a is two. So our y intercept is going to be zero, two. So let's follow our pattern. Maximum, our zero is at our first tick mark. Remember, we designed it this way, so they should line up really nicely. Our minimum, will happen at the next horizontal tick mark. And that Y coordinate is just the opposite value of A. And then we have another zero. And then you could repeat. Okay, let's move into step two, or excuse me, step three then. We're going to sketch. And you see I already repeated just a little bit. I put that first point of a new cycle so that we could draw a really nice cosine curve here. And we have one cycle of cosine. You see the period is clearly four because it took four units horizontally to complete a cycle. All right, so let's repeat a couple of cycles. So I'll show these in purple. Let's do another pattern, another repetition. We have a maximum, a zero, a minimum, a zero, and then we would repeat, so that's the first point in a new cycle. Okay, and we'll show that that continues on. And let's do a couple more on the negative side of the horizontal axis. 
So start a multiple of four away. Let's start at negative eight with another maximum. So maximum zero, minimum zero, and repeat again. Maximum zero, minimum zero. Links perfectly back in with that green cycle. And so this happens because cosine is a periodic function. Okay, that means it's cyclic or repetitive. Okay, so once you've got one cycle, you have as many cycles as you could ever want. Okay, and we'll show it continues in the negative direction as well. All right, so we have a really nice looking sketch of two cosine pi over two x. One final thing before we finish, look back at b. We said b is pi over two or about one and a half. And that should tell us how many cycles happen between zero and two pi. So we don't see two pi labeled on our horizontal axis because we did not label it in terms of pi, but we do know that two pi is about 6.28. Okay, so we can see that would be about here. That's about two pi. And so if we're confirming that b equals pi over two makes sense, we should see about one and a half cycles happening between zero and our newly marked two pi. So we have a full cycle here. Here's a quarter cycle, a half cycle, and then a little bit more than a half a cycle happens between zero and two pi. So pi over two equaling b, it all checks out. We should feel really confident that we have a great sketch of this equation.